Hey guys, it's EG, and in this one we're going to be taking a look at CPU performance on Linode, which is yet another VPS provider. Linode has a pretty sizable presence both in their community docs, but also on the YouTubes, so I'm curious to see if the performance of their instances stack up to the reputation. Linode hasn't announced any big changes to their instances lately, so we're going to be looking at three instance types that have been around since basically forever. And the node isn't terribly forthcoming about their hardware stack, so we won't know exactly what hardware we're running on until we launch everything. So for this test session, we're going to be creating three different Linode instance types using different plans. One dedicated CPU, one shared CPU, and one high memory instance which uses a dedicated CPU. I decided against using a GPU instance because they cost a fortune and because we're just focusing on CPU performance and the smallest GPU instance has 8 CPUs. We're going to be focusing on the 2 CPU variety of instance type here, so the dedicated and shared CPU type have the same memory amounts at 4GB, but the high memory instance has 24GB of RAM, but it still only has 2 CPUs. So if you're wondering about the difference between shared and dedicated types, with the shared type, the hardware that that instance is running on is actually shared across lots of other instances, so the actual performance that you have can fluctuate based on load throughout the day. This is actually tracked by the system as a metric called CPU steal. The dedicated instance types shouldn't suffer from CPU steal in the same way, so you should expect better or at least more consistent performance from these dedicated types of instances. We're also going to be targeting Ubuntu LTS as the test distro and we'll be running these tests out of Linode's Fremont, California data center. Now Linode has some pretty solid API docs and I was able to use them to provision my setup with Terraform and some test scripts. Now the internal names for the instances are G6 Standard 2, G6 Dedicated 2, and G7 High Memory 1. Now, without knowing more about the hardware, I think it would be fair to assume that the G in G6 and G7 means generation. I don't know that for sure, but would that mean that the G7 with its high memory will come in head and shoulders above the other two instance types? Well, here we're going to start out with Boten to see how quickly the CPU can hash a 2GB file like, for example, an ISO or something like that. The fastest time was 2 seconds of file over 500 iterations by the G6 standard shared instance. The other two instances were still really fast at less than a second behind, but still it's interesting that the shared instance pulled the best time here. But here's where things start to get interesting. PrimeSieve is a program that finds lots and lots of prime numbers. Now look at the difference between the G6 standard shared instance and the G6 dedicated instance. That gap is crazy and even still, the G7 high memory instance pulled the worst score, not just by a second like the Boten test, but by 5 seconds. And that's 5 seconds across 500 iterations. Now that adds up. And at last we've got the Helsing test which showcases the biggest difference. It took the shared instance type 27 and a half seconds to generate 4 million vampire numbers compared to the dedicated instances which took over a minute at 62 seconds to generate the same 4 million vampire numbers. What can we conclude from this test case? Well first off, dedicated does not always mean better. Now I kind of always thought that maybe I would see better performance overall with a dedicated instance type, and maybe that's still true because this is a rather limited test, but from here, it didn't really matter that much. And likewise, shared does not mean slower, or at least slower, than a dedicated instance. It all really comes down to the hardware. I suppose the reason why you'd want to run a dedicated instance is if you see or think you see losses coming from using shared resources. I ran these tests multiple days during the night and the morning on the west coast and there didn't seem to be any major performance degradation coming from the shared instance type so I'm going to say Linode's infrastructure is really solid or maybe there just wasn't much load on their system at the time. Could be both. And high memory instances don't appear to have any CPU performance benefits either. But I think the biggest takeaway for me here is that it reinforces the old adage, more does not always equal better.
Throwing more memory at a situation is not going to fix anything if the CPU is the bottleneck. And likewise, tenacity, which is usually whether the instance is on bare metal or not, but it can also apply to dedicated and shared instances. If you're not having trouble with CPU steel, changing from a shared instance to a dedicated type likely won't solve or fix anything. And really the last thing to keep in mind here is that the winner, in terms of best timing, is the cheapest instance by a long shot. It was just 20 bucks for that shared instance, compared to 30 for the dedicated and 60 for the high memory instance. And this makes a good segue to the outro. Now it felt a little lopsided to add that high memory instance type to this test, but comparing the differences between just those two instances was kind of lame at first, so throwing a third one in added some color. But the elephant in the room that I didn't mention earlier in the video is that the shared instance type is running a totally different CPU. It's an AMD Epic 7542 Zen 2, which is the same type of AMD processor that Vulture uses. The dedicated and high memory types were both using an AMD Epic 7601, which strikes me as a bit odd because you're actually paying more money for inferior hardware. This rubs me the wrong way because Linode, like most VPSs, doesn't provide much information in the way of their hardware, so you kind of have to dig a bit to find the specs. AWS, on the other hand, provides quite a bit of information about their hardware and their infrastructure, which helps operations people fine-tune environments to make the most out of what's available for the right price. And I get that these are fundamental differences between choosing a VPS and a full enterprise cloud service provider, but I digress. I hope that you liked this video, and if you did, you can follow me on Mastodon. I'm currently on Mastodon social right now, but that'll change at some point. When it does, I'll update it with the new instance info. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.